Hello creatives, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to take you through what is new in Illustrator on the iPad. Now I have done a few videos about Illustrator on the iPad and if you guys want to check them out I'll have them linked somewhere either on the video or in the description down below. So when you're in Illustrator on the iPad like I am here, when you open up Illustrator on the iPad you are defaulted to the home page and then you can always view what's new and upcoming. So let's go ahead and just dive right in and look through it. So for the first one, Rotate Canvas. I was so waiting for this. I was so excited because it was one of the things that I mentioned in my, or I believe I mentioned it, in my Everything Missing in Illustrator on the iPad video, which again, I'll have linked somewhere. That is the one thing that I wanted because if you compare this to apps like uh, applications like Procreate. In Procreate, you can, for instance, let's just go into here, you can rotate the canvas any way you want to. But in Illustrator, when they launched it for the iPad, that was not a possibility. It wasn't a feature in the program, but now you can have it. Um, you can also invite people to edit your designs and illustrations. And that is a really nice feature, especially if you're working on a team, a design team, and there are like a lot of different um, hands in the design and illustration. Like one person does one part, another person does another part. Like if you have um, someone who is purely just making illustrations and then someone who does all the topography so you can have and share your work between each other and I'll show you that. You can also have layer renaming and organization. Now I did show this in my last video so if you did not see it go ahead and check it out. It was uh, Pen Tool Basics um, in Illustrator on the iPad so I did showcase how to name your layers in that video and there's also keyboard shortcuts. Now I don't have a keyboard here today on my iPad but if you use a keyboard with your iPad there are keyboard shortcuts that you can use. There's also artboard presets. So you can change your artboard orientation and apply standard sizes to existing artboards, which is kind of handy. And then they always do a what's coming. So we can look forward to sketch to vector, which is really great. It kind of already works, but I guess they're going to expand it because they already have the brush tool, which the brush tool, when you like, make a mark on the artboard, it literally goes ahead and just converts those into vector points. So we'll see how they expand on that. Then you also have improved precision. I guess they're going to expand the intricacies of the program so that way your touch to the screen is going to be a little bit more precise. I know with the brush tool specifically, it's a little laggy. And then variable width strokes. So we already have different strokes of like different widths of strokes for the program, but I wonder if they're going to give you like different widths for like different types of strokes, like the dash line or like the dot line and stuff like that for strokes. We'll see. And then you also have enhanced brushes. Okay, so uh, when I said about sketch to vector with the brush tool, I was excited to see enhanced brushes and. Uh, it just kind of makes it more of a competitive program to procreate because in procreate you have like a million brushes let's go in here you tap the brush tool and there's like a million choices of brushes like they're all in different categories so you have lots to choose from in illustrator you have one Oh my gosh, okay, there's effects and appearances. That is what I was waiting for. It was one of the things I shouted out in my what's missing in Illustrator on the iPad. And I'm so excited that they're going to bring that here. Uh, Cause the only thing that they have right now is opacity. And I'm just like, that's not enough. Like you can't do shape to shape blends, like anything like that. You can do like gradients, which isn't the same. But um, you can't, like, there's so many other things that I was hoping for, and I'm glad that they're going to start bringing those out. Let's go ahead and go through each one of these. I'm just going to tap into a document that I had already created. You can see this over on my Instagram, and this is something that I made. This is just like a little card, a little like 
art print, it's like eight by 10 art print. So I'm gonna take you through the rotate canvas. First things first, you won't need your Apple Pencil for this, so we'll just do that. Rotate canvas, two fingers on the canvas, pinch, turn. So it's not as smooth as Procreate, but it works. So I'm happy about that because for instance, in this illustration that I have here, I had to go in and precisely move these points around. And sometimes when you're on a curve, that's really hard to do, especially if you're just stuck stationary in one place like this. So to be able to move and then change up the points that way is really, really handy. That's the rotate canvas. Now to invite people to come and edit this, there's this little person icon with a plus sign up here on the top right hand taskbar. So you tap that and then it will take a second and then you can add people by their email address. So um, if you have people like, <laughs> that's my boyfriend. If you have people signed up into um, a Creative Cloud uh, account or if you have their email address, you can literally invite them to edit this as well so that they can open it up in Illustrator on the iPad for themselves and they can continue working on it or whatever your project is, which is really, really nice. Now, um, there is also the renaming and organization of layers. So in the layers panel over here, you can see that I have lots of different layers. I have about nine. And for these, I did not name them. So um, if you haven't watched my previous video, I'll show you how to name them right now. Let's just take layer five because it has a word on it. It has love on it, see? So you can just double tap and then you can rename the layer. I'm going to put love oh, and press OK. And then it pops up with the name right there. So that's really handy. And then to be able to move layers, you just press and hold and drag, press and hold and drag. And then it takes it through and allows you to organize your layers. Now, with the rest of this, it's all about grouping. So you can group certain objects together, let's say, Let's zoom on on this little guy here. Those layers are locked, okay, good. You can click and drag over, and then you can ungroup or you can group them together. So that way in the layers panel, if you go here, if you ungroup it, it makes more layers. If you group it, it pulls the layers together. So you can very easily organize your layers and rename them now, which is a great feature. Okay, and then, Next was the keyboard shortcuts. Now, I don't have a keyboard set up on mine. I do have one, but I just don't use it for my iPad. I find it unnecessary. Um, so you can go through all the keyboard shortcuts for yourself. Um, you can set them up exactly how you have them set up on your desktop um, for your keyboard shortcuts and such like that. Now, the last one was artboard presets and so this art print is an 8x10 size, that's the size I started with. So for instance, if you wanted to have this in different sizes, the artboard presets over here has it already loaded right here on this icon tool over on the left toolbar instead of having to go out back to the home page and then uh, create a new artboard size with a new document and all that stuff. So for instance, if I wanted to make this into like Mm, postcard. I can literally choose a postcard size and then what I'm going to do, change the orientation in the properties panel to landscape, move it over, oh, and it took that. All right, let's move it over a bit more so it has more space. Properties panel, change the orientation, there we go. And then what we can do here is I can select everything that's over here. Whoops, did not select the background because it was locked. Hold down the constraint, choose the background too. What, why did it do that? There we go, okay, now it's all there. So I'm gonna duplicate everything. I'm gonna pull it over here and then we're going to constrain it to the postcard size because right now it's not in postcard size. 
and it turns it onto a new layer. So what I'm going to do here is double tap and name this postcard. Whoops. Okay, for some reason, oh, I see, I was on the wrong layer, okay. So then what I'm gonna do, lock that layer, lock that one, lock that one, lock that one, lock that one, lock that one. So if this ever happens, it's pretty simple just to grab it. Grab it, group it, bring it down there. There we go. Oh, missed one. Bring it down there. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So now all of this is on its own layer. And then we can resize it from there. Starting with the background. There we go. Actually, since it's a postcard, I usually only do half. And then for the rest of it, We're just going to deselect the background here because we don't need it. Select all of that. Hold down the constraint. Constrain the proportions. Move it about. There we go. There we go. So now you have a postcard size of the same design. So very easy, much better than having to go out of the document, go to the home page and then create a new document with a new artboard size and all that. So that is what is new in Illustrator on the iPad. Again, the main thing that I'm really happy with is the fact that you can rotate the canvas now even though it's a little choppy, but that is like the best thing so far. And the fact that effects and appearances are gonna be coming soon, super, super excited about that. And let me know down below what you guys are looking forward to that they're, they're coming out with next because I would really like to know what you guys think and I will see you all in my next video. See you soon, creatives. <laughs>